Happy Friday, Bears. Coming up, we look at Black History Month reception and UAHS basketball. Starting on Monday, UA schools will be mask optional. This decision by the school board will be re-evaluated two and a half weeks after February 28th. However, the federal mandate remains effective through March 18th for public transportation, so masks must still be worn on buses. Our robotics bears have been working hard to prepare for their upcoming competitions. Nora reports on their progress. The Robotics Bears kicked off their season with a scrimmage on February 19th. This was a preview for their upcoming competitions in March. I talked to president of the club, Nathan Mark, on how the team is working in their new space. We have way more space in the old school, obviously, which is great. Um, the only problem is, like, I think due to shipping like issues, we don't have a lot of the storage space that we need, so we have to put everything behind the auditorium. But we have a lot more access to stuff in the machine shop, which is great, um, a lot more tools. Um, and it's easier to just be here in school instead of like driving to Metro, which we used to have to do. Um, so we've been meeting every day after school from 5.30 to 7.30, and then we've also started meeting on Saturdays. Um, but even before the season started, like me and a couple other people, part of the leadership, uh, have been planning out what we like our goals for the season, what we wanted to get done. Um, so it's just a lot of like preparation uh, before after school, a lot of hours just put in uh, designing stuff, uh, building obviously. It's great because like even if you aren't into like technology or robotics um, or engineering, like you can still be part of the team because we have a business team um, for writing grants and getting money because it's a really expensive operation. Um, so if you're into that, you can do it. But I mean, if you're creative, uh, if you like to work with your hands, if you like to design things, um, if you're not afraid to like work at stuff outside of school and in school, because it is, it's a big commitment, um, big time commitment, uh, then it's for you. If you would like to get involved, you can come to their practices from 5.30 to 7.30 in the South Commons and email Nathan Mark for more information. This has been Nora Dimitrov reporting for the WARL. If robotics sounds interesting to you, consider the new science and robotics class as scheduling continues. It incorporates many of the same elements as robotics club. An out-of-date operating system is one of the leading causes of technology issues. The technology department states that it's important to run available updates on your laptop and iPads to prevent this issue. If you need more help or have any more questions, you can head to the first or second floor help desks. And now to Caroline and Kaya with sports. The Bears hockey team beat Columbus Academy 10-0 in the Round 2 OHSAA playoff game with goals from Sam Cannon, Max Robbins, Sam Burns, Tanner Stone, Carson Greesock, Brendan Tice, Nolan Adams, and Matthew Wilder. The team takes on Jerome tomorrow at 6-15 for the third round playoff game. Last Friday in the second round of Division I district tournament, the Upper Arlington girls basketball team won against Northland with a final score of 44-34. Alyssa Guest led her team with 18 points. The team season came to an end on Wednesday after losing in the district semifinal to Marysville 56-36. The girls finished the season 15-9. Last Friday, the boys' basketball team won the OCC Central Championship game against Hilliard-Davidson 73-62 after finishing last in the OCC Central last season. Ellie takes a look at some of the boys' basketball starters and their perspectives about the season. Last Friday, the varsity boys' team defeated Hilliard-Davidson 73-62, claiming the first OCC title since 2017. The Bears were ranked last in the previous season's OCC rankings. Some of the players reflected on what has changed since then. I think overall we just have like a much more positive team. Uh, when things go wrong, uh, we stay confident. I feel like last year when things started to go bad, we got mad at each other and started arguing. Uh, now we just believe in each other and we have a lot better chemistry. Uh, the crowd brings a lot of energy to our games. Um, it's a lot easier to play with them cheering us on. Um, when the crowd's going crazy, it definitely makes the game more fun. To... Catalano, Caroline Porterfield, and Riley Huddleston. Junior Grant Gooding is seated first for the 100 breaststroke going into states. The wrestling team's postseason begins tomorrow with the sectional at home, where the top four finishers in each weight class advance to districts on March 4th and 5th at Hilliard Derby. Three of the top 10 teams in the Columbus area will be at this sectional. The team has won three consecutive sectionals and are hoping to win their fourth. The top four there will qualify for the state tournament March 11th through the 13th at the Schottenstein Center. The USA finished fifth with a total medal count of 25 at the Winter Olympics. Eight of their medals were gold, ten were silver, and seven were bronze. And now to Ellie and Kira with Eric Nowalk.
Hollywood junior and musician Eric Noel, who has recently released new music on all streaming platforms and is continuing to pursue his passion of music. So Eric, when did you begin to be passionate about music and why? Um, I started about almost seven years ago. I was in like either fourth or fifth grade. Uh, and I guess I started just because I liked creating. And I found the guitar um, just because I wanted to learn an instrument. And so it kind of just stuck with me. And what instruments are your favorite and what do you think you're best at? Uh, I'm best at guitar uh, just because I've been doing it for so long. But I've also picked up drums, which I really enjoy uh, just being able to play. Do you have anything new that you're working on at the moment? I do. I'm working on a new single, which will be the third release uh, that I have. And then after that, uh, I'm going to release my album. Thanks, Eric. Tune into Eric's upcoming projects on Spotify and Apple Music Fairs. You can also check out the Upper Arlington's musical production of 42nd Street this Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Now let's toss it to Community with Patrick and Elizabeth. Welcome back to Community. Community. As conflict turned to war between Russia and Ukraine on Thursday, Ukrainians fled the capital while, pro while protesters against the war in Russia were being arrested. This morning, news reports state that Russia's invasion has reached the capital city of Kiev amid missile strikes. Sophia spoke with global history teacher Mark Besh to gain more historical information about Russia and Ukraine's relationship. What, what does Russia want from the Ukraine? And I'd just like to preface it, number one, I'm no expert on Vladimir Putin. I'm no expert on, on the Ukraine and Russia. But from a historical standpoint, Russia has always wanted to extend their land to the east. And since the breakup of the Soviet Union, when the Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, Russia has desired that land back. And Vladimir Putin, who's been in power for 22 odd years, has always desired to have the Ukraine be part of Russia. Furthermore, I think that since the breakup of the Soviet Union, you have countries like Belarus, you have the Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan. I believe that Vladimir Putin can accommodate a ruler, a leader in those countries that are pro-Russian, but he cannot accommodate a leader like in Ukraine that is not pro-Russian. And so I believe that Vladimir Putin wants to take over the Ukraine and wants to regain that land, that prestige, that grandeur that the Soviet Union had in their heyday from 1945 uh, to 1991 at the breakup of the Soviet Union. NBC News stated that although the U.S. will not be deploying troops to Ukraine at, the at this time, there will be heavy sanctions put on Russia from the United States and the NATO member countries. These sanctions are said to be significant in size and scope. Next week, Student Council is hosting the annual Change to Make a Change fundraiser to help those fighting cancer. Check out our Instagram at WARL underscore TV for a message from Ms. Brown about it. Congratulations to mock trial team, Team Sotomayor, for moving on to states. Eliza Wonderlich, Alana Becker, Parker Badat, Madeline Webb, Rachel Leach, Nathan Adams, Nathan Varda, and our very own Kickin' It member, Kendo Karate, will compete on March 10th for the state title. Location is to be determined. Good luck. Seniors, if you are interested in wearing the service cord at graduation but are still looking for last-minute service hours, Kira takes us through an opportunity at the Hilliard Food Pantry. The Hilliard Food Pantry is a great volunteering opportunity for high school students to gain service hours. Jen Wagner, the pantry's manager, takes us on a tour of the facility and provides insight on how the pantry works. Hi, I'm Jennifer Wagner. I'm the manager of the Hilliard Food Pantry. We are located on Cemetery Road and I'd like to give you a quick little tour of what our pantry looks like and how it works. Right here, the, our customers come in this store and they meet one of our intake people. This is Carrie. She checks them in on the iPad with their ID and we then start shopping. The first thing they do is they get a shopping cart. It's just like in Kroger's or Giant Eagle or anything like that. They start pushing it on through here. And here's our produce alley, which is always uh, full of good fruits and vegetables. So we have limit signs right above and that tells the people how many things they can get. And that all depends on how much we have that week. So they walk through here. They don't have to take everything. They take just what they choose. Here's Ying. She's one of our produce um, people that works here every Thursday night. Over here, we've got diapers for those who have young children and wipes. We're running a little low right now, but usually we have them. Right here, we have our classes and information on how to get things and get help at the pantry. They're coming around here to our meat department. And today, there's a limit of one meat because it depends on how much we get for the week and as, as to how much we can give out. 
coming around here. This is our miscellaneous section. Victoria is working that today. And as you can see, there's numbers on the top. In that section, they may make two choices. We have a cereal, peanut butter and jelly, which is one of the most um, popular items in our pantry. There's a limit of three there. Moving on to pasta and pops and waters and rice, also big staples that lots of people have. This column is our, um, our vegetables and our canned fruits. Walking over to the next section is our soups on top and our beans on the bottom. And the limit there is two. Coming around here is our tomato products, our spaghetti sauce, our beef stews, our canned meats, and our um, ravioli. This is our personal care area. Everybody gets toilet paper each day and soap, and then they get to choose two more items along with whatever they um, want. This is our dairy department. Today we've got eggs, cheese, um, milk, and salad and grapes, and that varies from week to week. Coming around over here is our bakery and bread department. And um, we get a lot of our bread from Giant Eagle and other uh, stores. Today, it's a limit of two breads, because again, you can see um, we don't have a lot of bread. This is also our clothing area. If, if someone needs clothes, if they just come to the country and they have nothing to wear, no coats, no shirts, we provide that for free as well. We also have a little jewelry department, which we don't always have, but we do this week in particular. One of our things we're most proud of here is our library. It is run by former Hilliard City School teachers. It's all grade leveled and sorted and um, updated each week. Finally, we have a pet food department where we have cat and dog food. And uh, luckily the Humane Society helps us um, supply our stock. So I hope you enjoy the food pantry. If you ever want a personal tour, we'd be happy to do that. Welcome to call us or check out our website. And again, I hope you learned something new. Thanks so much. This has been Kira Dapur reporting for the WARL. If you've got talent, and yes, you do, then scan any of the QR codes in the art display cases along Golden Bear Boulevard if you want to sign up for the talent show. March Book Madness begins next week. Miss Deal, check out Miss Deal's canvas page for more details. Tickets for, the, tickets for the Big Time Rush Forever Tour go on sale worldwide today at 11 a.m. The group performs in Cincinnati on July 7th and Cuyahoga Falls on July 8th. Tickets are available on their official website at BigTimeRushOfficial.com. Other summer concert listings can be found on your favorite artist websites, through your favorite concert venues, on Ticketmaster, and Live Nation. And now, let's pass it over to Ava on Live on Location. On Wednesday, February 23rd, UAH has hosted their first ever Black History Month reception. The reception included an address from Mr. Boas, tours of the posters, poetry readings, and many more. I spoke with Mr. Boas about the importance and significance of this event. I think, first of all, I would say the significance of Black History is that it's important for us to know our history, to make sure that we learn from it, and not repeat the, the parts of history that we don't want to repeat but to also learn from it in the sense of inspiration. And tonight, that's what made this event so important, is it was an opportunity for us to come together and honor a black history, be inspired by one another's presence, and to be able to forge uh, unity and work together to make sure that we honor our ancestors, um, know that what they did before us is not lost on us, and know that it's up to us to carry on their legacy. Thank you for coming out, and uh, it's been a really great event. Thank you, Mr. Boas, and thank you to Frau Fellinger and the Ambassadors of Change for helping out on this event. This is the first event of its kind. On Sunday, February 27th at 1.30 p.m., the Upper Arlington Public Library is hosting a celebration for all families of color. This event includes story time, trivia, and crafts. This event is suitable for all ages three and up. Now let's kick it back to Maine with Carter and Jillian. UA Idea Week is April 4th through the 8th, and the theme is Down the Rabbit Hole. There will be a wide range of hands-on workshops for students. More information about signing up for your sessions will be available in the coming weeks. Next Tuesday is ACT Day for all juniors at UAHS. All of their students will have a digital learning day from home. Juniors, make sure to leave your phones at home and bring a form of ID, such as a driver's license, water, number two pencils, and an approved calculator. Study hard and enjoy your weekend, Bears. Ooh, and you in general and that's just what we do